Gambit lovers, never have I ever had so many requests to make one video, and this will be on Bush Gas Gambit Deniers. We all know how fun it is to play the Bush Gas Gambit, or if you don't yet, you have to check out the video right above my head when they take this pawn over here on E5, sacrificing it right away. We play Knight C6, I'll turn on Stockfish here. Stockfish is just a hater. Uh, check out the original video to see why Stockfish is actually wrong, or even better, this line where they play Bishop to C4. We offer the pawn one more time, and again, Knight takes E5, the most common move. We're so, so excited when this happens every time. We play Knight C6, we offer the pawn on F7 multiple ways, are ready to play bishop takes f2 these lines are so so much fun however if you are like me you are devastated every single time your opponent chooses even though knight takes e5 is the most common move every single time your opponent chooses not to capture this pawn but by the end of this video i promise you you will be so so excited for whatever line comes you're not just hoping for knight takes e5 you will be excited no matter what they play you'll be excited that they just play knight f3 and here you know you'll know you already have them no matter what they do here so this video will be dedicated to all moves that are not Nate takes e5. People that are trying to be like, oh, I don't want to, even, even though it's good, even though it's a pawn, even though Stockfish likes it, I don't want to go into all your nasty bush gas gambit prep, which is smart of them. But now there will be nasty bush gas gambit prep no matter what move you do. So watch out. We will cover a few moves here. So d4 will be first. And it is move played by people who are scotch players, who see bishop c5 and are like, oh, that's a developing move. You know, it's like knight c6 and I'm a scotch player, so I just play d4. So people, we, we get that a lot, but this will be a very, very bad scotch for white, and we will soon see why. We will cover here c3, people who are like Joko Piano players, who see the bishop coming out to c5. Who, you know, if we had included these two moves, c3 is, I think, the most common move in that position and prepares d4. We're going to cover this. I'm very, very excited. And the last option we're going to cover is after bishop to c4, knight f6, even though knight takes e5 is like plus two, plus three, or, or at least this position is plus three. Some people don't do it. Some people play like castles or c3 or d3. You can see here like the next most common moves. We're going to cover all of those. I'm going to just show you my games and this is going to be awesome no matter what they do. There's nowhere for them to hide. There is going to be nowhere for your opponents to hide. That is the bottom line. Okay, let's get to it. The first move I'd like to cover is d4. And this is one that we can actually punish pretty well. So this is this is a move that if your opponent's a scotch player, they might be playing d4 here. And I've, be, I, I've gotten it a few times. E takes d4, so they play knight takes d4, and they think after knight c6, so so basically, I mean, they think it's probably a scotch, so knight f3, knight c6, d4, takes, takes, so knight f6 and bishop to c5 are, are, are the two most common moves here, and they think maybe in this position, you know, you'll play knight c6 in the bush gas gambit uh, transposition, and it, it, it'll transpose, it'll be like their stuff, but no, we are here playing knight f6, and this is a very, very important difference, we have not spent a tempo playing knight c6. And so when we play knight f6 so quickly, we're attacking this e4 pawn. We've already gotten our bishop out to a square where it's, you know, has some nice targets there. And we're going to castle. We're going to bring our rook right here onto the e-file. And we're going to put a ton of pressure on e4. And we're doing it so, so quickly because we haven't spent this one tempo yet moving a piece on the queen side. We're, we're being really, really quick on the, on, on the king side. Okay, so we're attacking the e4 pawn. And our opponent pretty much has two options, knight c3. Knight c3 is pretty much the only option because uh, bishop to d3 is not possible because this queen needs to defend the knight, and that just falls. e5 doesn't work, because queen e7. And sometimes queen e7 is annoying, because like it blocks in your bishop. Here, that is not the case. Queen e7, we're just winning this pawn. We're really just winning this pawn. This is a, a nasty pin. They can't play queen e2, because if this knight falls again, bishop to f4, we just play d6. This is just completely winning. Queen e7, we just win a pawn. There's really nothing they can do. Yeah, bishop e2, we just take the pawn. So, our opponent should probably play knight c3. But then we castle... And all of a sudden, you know, they need to finish their development. It's actually pretty bad because how are you defending this pawn? Our next move is just rook e8. And it's it's very good. So, you know, there's a lot of common bishop moves here. Let's say bishop e3. We just play rook e8. And then the question becomes, how are you defending this pawn? Because if we keep following the most common moves, we play d5. That's the other point. We're playing d5, opening this. And our, our like, if we had played an ac6 and they had gotten the time to get their king out of the center, they might be okay. But here, this is very, very bad because there's a ton of pressure on e4. And if they take it, then that opens up this pin. So here, I think, you know, we just follow the most common moves, but white is already should move the bishop again and is just down a pawn for nothing. And I've actually punished a lot of very high-rated players here, and I'd like to show you some of my games where I've won very, very easily against people who tried to play the scotch. Okay, you can see all these question marks in the beginning for a bush gas gambit. But or my opponent here tried to play a scotch. 
uh, they actually playing bishop e3 actually offering me this pawn, but okay, I didn't take it for whatever reason. But here we transpose, and so here they play f3. And so f3, so, so what they're doing would make a lot of sense if this were like a Sicilian. If this played like c5 and takes, and like this pawn were here. But this rook is just going to kill them on this file, this bishop's not protected, and so we just play d5. It's a very, very simple formula to crushing the scotch transposition here, uh, because we just play rook e8 and d5. There's just too much pressure here, and there's really no good option for, for white to get out of this. So my opponent just played bishop b5, it's not helping them, c6, deflecting the attack on my rook, they retreated, takes, and you know, this is just a complete disaster <laughs> because I just took everything, I'm just going to take this bishop. My opponent's not even a slouch anyway, but uh, that bishop's hanging, the, this knight falls in the game very, very quickly, and so I won this game very easily. So, you can get a lot of quick wins like that. Uh, I'll show you another game here. This is against actually a Fide Master. <laughs> this is against a Fide Master who thought they could transpose into the Scotch out of the Bush Gas Gambit. And so knight b3, that's a good idea. It's a good idea because my opponent realizes they want to play probably bishop d3 to castle as soon as possible and to defend e4. But um, the bishop can't go here because this knight hangs. So knight b3 attacks my bishop. But we're going to put our bishop on a very useful square. This diagonal bishop here is, is a good idea because now we're pinning the knight and we're again attacking e4. So they defend it and just d5. Just d5. I'm just blowing, blowing the center of the board right open. And so they take this pawn, but I'm playing rook e8 check. And now, how are you getting your king out of the center? Again, they just can't get out of the center quick enough. Because the issue is if bishop e3, I'm playing knight takes d5. And this knight's having a lot of fun on all these pins here. Um, there's just so, so many threats in this position. Uh, so, you know, not an easy option to get out of check. My opponent in the game plays like king f1. And I just take it, and here, I mean, I'm just better because my opponents moved their king, and I would go on to win this game because my opponent had their king in the middle. Look at all my pieces come to the center. Was able to snag that pawn on an in-between move. G takes f6 was necessary, or else I get mated. <laughs> Needed a square for my king. All right, here, come back, threatening rook d1. We're just a pawn ahead. Our opponent's king is still unsafe. Rook here, threatening uh, check to win the queen. You know, king's not in a good spot. Queen takes h3, I, the reason I, I, I wanted to show this game all the way through, because queen takes h3 is a very nice finish, I think. Um, grabbing that rook, because it was threatening to block my rook e4 idea. But I'm playing queen takes h3, so now if they take it, check here, and this is a very, very nice, easy simplification into a king and pawn ending. A king and pawn ending up one pawn is pretty much an automatic win, and so this is a very uh, nice simplification to an ending that is certainly winning. So, that would be those... Two games, and we have a couple more that I'd love to show. So my opponent's playing here, bishop to c4, and now f3, again trying to hang on to the pawn, but again they get blasted open with just d5, and here this is just up a pawn against what I believe is a fide master, um, and just winning this game in the end game. And then one more, this is very interesting. So in this, my opponent's playing bishop to c4. Bishop to c4 is probably the best idea, because my... Uh, Number one, white is castling very quickly. And so number two, against knight f6, they want to play e5. And so now my, my, my knight's under attack, but the key point here is to just play d5, let them take it, take here. And so here we're actually up a pawn. Uh, queen e2 check, we just cover with bishop e6. And this is actually very, very nice. It looks like this pawn was a complete wrecking ball in our position, but we're actually just going to castle. We're going to play knight c6. We have, we have a bishop pair. We have some very, very nice, powerful pawns in the middle of the board. We're going to use this g file. And this position's actually totally all good. As you know, I showed in this game here, we attack that bishop, we're able to now uh, snag this pawn because we push that bishop away, and we're going to use this g-file here to make some really killer threats. h6, I think, is now just winning a piece because as soon as that knight moves, yep, we just take it. Rook takes f3, queen takes f3 using this pin, and this is just winning. Got some nice sacrifices and a check here to pick up the queen as well. So lots of fun tactics in this. So that pretty much covers d4. And the next line that I'd like to cover is a line that the Grandmaster played against me, actually, who I checkmated in seven moves just a couple days ago. And so I'm very, very excited to, to show this one to you. It's c3 in this position, which is not a particularly challenging option, actually. Uh, white wants to play d4 to attack the bishop, which looks like it makes a lot of sense. But we're going to strike very quickly with just d5. And here white has two options. They have e takes d5 and d4. Uh, and knight takes e5 is also playable, but after d takes e4, this is very... Uh, not, not particularly challenging at all. So e takes d5 is playable, after which we will play knight to f6, and actually offer a second pawn. So this is, this is very, very exciting, and Stockfish very much recommends white take the second pawn. But a lot of people here are playing d4, after which we take, take, play bishop to b4 check, 
Our next moves are castles and knight takes d5, and this is easily uh, equality for black. And actually, we can get this line if they play d4 first. If they play d4 first, we play takes, and uh, white, white here has the option to play e takes d5, actually. And after e takes d5, we can just play knight to f6, which is just transposing into this line. However, I mean, most people are going to play c takes d4, and this is a very, very bad option for white to do because they're leaving this pawn hanging. So to review, sorry to switch it up for a second, but they can play d4 here. We simply swap that pawn and now play d takes e4. And at this moment, we're actually up a pawn. So white here should play d takes c5, and we trade queens, take the knight. And the material is equal here, and white does have a bishop pair, but white's pawn structure is a complete disaster, and Stockfish does not like this for white, as it should not, because the, there are some double pawns here, and a weakness just hanging out around here, whereas black's position is very, very nice. And the move here that both Stockfish and Leela love is knight e7, which is interesting, but part of the point is bishop to f4 counters with, can be countered with knight d5, defending this pawn, attacking the bishop. And here black's position is very, very nice. This bishop can develop to either e6 or f5. This knight can even develop to a6 or just c6. And black's going to cast along, bring these rooks to the center. Black has a very, very pleasant end game. So white should, even though this is most common, I've, I've won a lot of uh, games from this position. Even though this line is most common for white, it's not a particularly good option to just go c takes d4 and just straight into a worse end game. So that's why what white should play is, is here d takes e takes d5 without d4. And after knight to f6, we just can keep developing. Now they can snag this pawn, knight takes e5. Even though d4, as we looked at before, is the most common option, it's not very challenging, like I said. So here, if white wants to play for something, and they can play Stockfish's line of snagging that pawn, knight takes e5. And so now the order of our next two moves don't really matter. We're down two pawns, but we're about to snag this one back. We're going to castle. White should certainly play d4, as they've prepared to do, which uh, secures their knight, attacks our bishop. But here we play queen takes d5. And this is an interesting position. Because we're down one pawn, but we have a very large lead in development. And what a lot of white players actually don't notice, you see here bishop to c4, the most common move, bishop e2, bishop d3. A lot of white players don't notice that they actually can't move that bishop because it loses right away. So that's another point in our favor. If they snag this bishop, we simply take the knight and they have a you know, nasty pin going on here and we're at least getting our pawn back. So that's certainly not how they should play. So then the question is like what to do because you, you, know, you want to develop but you can't. Um, because this g2 pawn is hanging, even though a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, a, a line that I think Stockfish likes very much is actually queen to f3, which makes a lot of sense, because it hits our queen, proposing a queen trade, which is something you should do if you're up material, if your king is unsafe. So I think it's a very uh, sound choice here for white. And what we can play here is simply back bishop to d6, takes, knight takes, and we need to move our bishop because we no longer had anybody threatening that knight, so they can take that bishop as soon as our queen's off the board. And now white needs to finish development, and it's still not very easy for them to do because they need to castle pretty quickly because rookie eight's coming, which is at least going to threaten to take a pawn, our pawn back, if not, you know, just win that knight with the pin. So a very logical move here is bishop to c4, bishop to e6, but again, you know, it Things aren't easy for white to be able to finish their development because, for example, here of castles, we can take that knight, and here's a good pause the video moment for a very nice tactic. Yep, yeah, that's right, we have knight takes c3. Taking advantage of the fact that that bishop's unprotected, if they take here, we go knight e2 check and take on e6, and this is a very, very nice end game for black as well. So, you know, white, even with most precise play, is going to be in, I think, a lot of trouble here. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are not exhibiting most precise play. Bishop to e3 is a move that we see pretty common, but just bishop to d6 back, threatening that knight to get our pawn back, this knight should retreat. And now knight g4, rook e8, all these moves are coming to, again, put a lot of pressure on that bishop to use that open file, take advantage of the fact that our opponent has not castled yet, and to take advantage of this very small window that we have for our opponent not yet castling. Okay, I promised a, a seven move checkmate against a grandmaster. Here it is. Here it is, my opponent, um, a French GM. And it starts out with a scotch, but now here my opponent's playing c3. So I allow this to transpose now into like uh, this c3 bush gas gambit. But my opponent now realizing that they don't like this endgame after d takes c5 and the queen swapping. So they play an a e5, but now they're just down two pawns and uh, now down three, <laughs> except that's also checkmate. So that's a very, very fun, very quick victory that I got uh, against against the Grandmaster. So the C3 line, not very good. I'm not sure if that game in of itself is evidence of it, but the C3 line, we just play D5, 
and we're doing fantastic. So C3 is not challenging, D4 is not challenging. We're gonna now look at bishop to C4, knight to F6, and moves other than knight takes E5. So the first line that I'd like to look at here is just C3, um, which is pretty common because a lot of Joko piano players think the position just resembles this one, where C3 is a very, very common move to prepare D4, or even to prepare a Joko pianissimo with just D3 and common Italian games. However, we do not have the knights like this. We have the knights like how they are. And really with c3, it's not a good move at all. This is really just a free pawn. It's really just a free pawn, actually. And here, white has two moves. They have d4 and castles. And in either scenario, we're going to be doing fantastic. So d4 is an option. But all we do is take it. And they recapture. We go bishop to b4 check. Our next move is just d5. And we castle. And we're really just a pawn up for absolutely nothing. So <laughs> really, knight takes e4 has a hit on f2 so they can't really even take back on e5 excuse me uh our opponent here well actually i did beat i did beat i have this game pulled up that same grandmaster actually yeah that, that same grandmaster is, is a bullet game again but they played here c3 i played knight takes e4 and so we had this exact same thing and, and 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 i won this game my opponent here played castles instead of playing c takes t4 doesn't really change anything here we just play d5 attack the bishop secure our knight um the bishop comes back, and here I'm just up a pawn for nothing, and eventually uh, won this game. Woo! <laughs> here we go, up a pawn. Uh, just winning, just winning the end game. They played bishop a6, and they took the bishop too. So fun times against Bush Gas Gambit deniers, even if they're you know high rated great masters. But okay, so really d4, yeah, we just take it. We give this check. We play d5. We castle. No big deal. Just an extra pawn. Our opponent also could castle. Also no big deal because we're playing here just d5. D5, a fantastic move because it secures our knight, takes the center, does great development, and attacks this bishop as well. So, like, bishop to b3 is the most common move. Bishop to b5, check, is all, no big deal. We just go c6, bishop to b3. And now here we could just be up a pawn by just playing knight c6, but we have something even better. And it's an introduction to the awesome ideas that I'm going to show you next against really critical bush gas gambit denying lines. Now we're playing here knight takes f2, which is a super, super fun move. So knight takes f2, okay, so we're in the queen, we open up this. It looks like kind of like a bad trade, trades that like beginners make and that they tell you you're not supposed to do because really a knight and a bishop that are active are worth a little bit more than a rook and a pawn. But here we have two pawns and also we hit them with e4. And here white's going to be demonstrated just how little development they have. You know, if you play c3 and can't play d4, that's a problem because this pawn on c3 is looking really, really stupid, just blocking this development and blocking all, all, all of this from coming out. So really, what should this knight do? People are playing here knight d4. We play, not even queen h4 check, but just c5 first. This knight should move. And now, again, we, you know, we, 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 you have all sorts of good stuff. Just castles is fine because really the situation white's in is that they can't even move this d3 or d4 we just off a saw and we have c4 coming next so really this pawn's gonna get to c4 it completely completely shuts down anything white can do and this position is just an absolute disaster for them you know they can play bishop c2 but we just play c4 completely paralyzing white's development and this position is just absolutely fantastic with a rook and two pawns for two pieces that will never ever get out so that's if they play c3 in this position, what they really should do, if they're a proper bush gas gambit denier, is either play d3 or play castles. We are going to play the most challenging and the most surprising move, knight takes e4. And it looks like we absolutely should not be able to play knight takes e4 because like our king's still in the middle, this pawn's hanging, you know, we've got some pieces out that are just floating around, they should be able to get us on this file, they get, get us on f7. And they're like, how are you able to get away with this? And we're really saying to white, okay, prove it prove that knight takes e4 is wrong. And, you know, it's not obvious what to do, and white does not have a good track record in this position of actually proving it. And we'll, we'll go through uh, all the most common moves here. And so the first one I'd like to start with, because we're definitely going to go through these top four moves, d3, rook to e1, uh, d4, and simply recapturing on e5. So d3, the point of knight takes e4 is very often, now we want to play knight takes f2. We need to keep striking very, very quickly. Um, with our king still in the center, we can't really just retreat and allow knight takes e5. It's not nearly as good. Knight takes f2 is a very, very interesting strike. And now people are overwhelmingly playing rook takes f2, even though the very, very interesting option, you see here over a thousand games for rook takes f2, the very interesting option of queen e2, queen e2 actually exists, after which we need to be very, very precise. We need to go knight back, check, e4, and then play d5. And then this is an interesting position. White's actually prevails, but I think we can roll the dice here at nobody playing really queen to e2 and just allowing this pin to continue but the, po the point with queen e2 is actually that these files are really really killer onto our king here 
But anyway, knight takes f2, let's get back to the point, which is rook takes f2 is, is going to be played if you play this in a game. And then we capture again. And in this position, we simply can just castle. We can simply just castle because our next move is going to be d5. And white here can play knight takes e5, allow that pawn to hang, but we go queen to h4 check. And this is an idea that we're going to see repeat a lot with this queen to h4 check in this exact sort of pattern. We go check here and hits h2. However, if our opponent guards h2, then queen to d4 check picks up the knight. Note we don't go queen to f6 check right away because knight to f3 saves everything. But queen to h4 check, our opponent needs to play king to f1, allow us to take h2. And this position is not, not, not a very fun one for them, actually. Uh, you can see here knight f3 being played most of the time to, to stop queen to h1 check with knight g1. However, here, you know, black has several good options, um, among them just simply, yeah, c6 and d5. Just continuing to develop, we have two pawns uh, and a rook for two pieces, and this position is very, very nice to play. Uh, white does not have to play knight takes e5, but then they're just going to allow us to play d5, and again, allow us to have our two pawns for the rook. So they could play like knight c3, it doesn't really matter, we play c6. We're playing d5 next, and this position is very, very, very interesting sort of equality. I mean, the, the, the engine reads equality. Okay, they can, they can snag e5 here, maybe. But we're just going to play here d5, and I think we have a very, very nice position. And this is very, very playable. So that is if white plays d3. And there are a lot of other options, actually, where you will see we're going to play knight takes f2 anyway. And among them are if white captures knight takes e5. The most common line, knight takes e5. So white got the pawn back, and if we castle, we have symmetrical positions on the board. However, we have something a little bit better. You know, they hit f7, but we can defend f7 with style by playing pawn to d5. So attacks the bishop, and overwhelmingly, white's playing just bishop to back. However, we're going to check on a couple other moves. But bishop b3, again, we can go for this very awesome line. Nate takes f2. Just go for this strike, and because the point is we trade everything... Now again, typically that's not a good trade in and of itself, but we have this queen to h4 check again. And the same exact idea of that knight hanging out there, and if they play king to g1, we pick up that knight, so white is losing. White needs to know only half the time they find the move, or less than half the time at 341, they play king to f1. We snag this pawn, um, and again, these are very, very fun positions to play. And I've gotten these in a couple games that I'd love to show you here. Uh, typical bush gas gambit starts out with all these question marks. But going for this pawn, and it's very, very jarring to white opponent to just see you snag that pawn right away. They play knight takes e5, I play d5, and I go for this knight takes f2 idea, where we trade everything and go queen to h4 check, which I think is a very, very strong idea. Now, in this game, my opponent plays queen to e2, instead of the more common knight to f3, knight to g1 back. The queen to e2 uh, makes some threats over here, but it, it defends the knight from the queen here. I just castle out of the way of that. My opponent snags this pawn. It's a little bit greedy. I go check. And I simply collect that bishop. And uh, th th this, this was a pretty pretty wild game. I think he here I'm much ahead. My opponent actually, we both blundered. Uh, my opponent missed a chance here, I think, to go, yes, queen to h5, after which they have a very, very strong attack. I blundered with bishop to d7. I should have just uh, retreated back. And I'm already up lots of material. So this was just queen to h1 check, and I just scooped that up, which is a very, very easy win here. I have another good game here. Let me flip that board of snagging that. And now with queen to e2, which is actually, I think, like the fifth most common move, all we need to do is just play d5. All we need to do is just play d5. That's what we're threatening. There's queen to e2 and c3 that people are playing sometimes. They're not very good moves because we're threatening to just go d5. And if they snag that, we can get his castle. And after rook to e8, I'm just much, much better here uh, with the black pieces because this bishop is very awkwardly placed. My opponent tried to take this knight. But the point is, if they take again, they have a lot of issues with uh, pins on this knight. So my opponent played knight takes f7. Clever idea, because if king takes, there's check, picking up my bishop, but I just go queen to d5, and that knight is trapped. Queen to b5 only made matters worse for my opponent, because it introduced a very, very nice tactic here to win the queen. I have another game that I think I've actually shown in another video, uh, here against a very, very strong player, actually. Uh, this is a good idea of playing knight takes e4, d5. So we're going for the same idea of sacrificing on f2, and going queen to h4 check. Snagging that pawn, another queen to e2, but here this is just too strong because this pin comes very, very quickly. And again, like we have a very strong attack and our opponent has no development, and we're also just like not even down anything. We have a rook and two pawns for these two pieces, which is a pretty good haul. And so here my opponent should have played d4, but after an ac6, I mean I'm attacking d4, I'm attacking e5, 
Note, 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 my queen helps out over here. Everybody's there. And so this position is very bad for white anyway, but my opponent actually just blundered the knight and then check. And then I also win the queen here with rook d1 check uh, like this. So nice wins that, that we can get pretty quickly if my, our opponent actually plays the most common stuff against nice takes e4. With knight takes e5, we play d5. I'll note here, however, our white has a, a couple other options other than bishop j just back to b3. That one of which is queen to f3, um, for, for which whatever reason is the, most, is the second most common move. We just play castles. Uh, our opponent was standing checkmate, but now our, our rook will defend. And here, this is already very bad for white, because whether they go bishop to b3 or bishop to d3, we're just playing bishop to d4. Bishop to d4 is a very, very good move, because it hits the knight here and limits uh, white's development this way. And this position just really kind of sucks for white. Uh, if they play knight to g4 back, this position is very, very bad. We play knight g5. This queen needs to is under attack and needs to stay on that knight. It's not pleasant. White can play here, pawn to d3, attacking our knight. But we play knight takes f2, and we can just kind of be up a pawn by snagging that one right there. No, white can't really play bishop takes d5 because of bishop d4 and issues along this diagonal as well. So queen to f3 is no challenge. What is an interesting challenge, however, is um, knight takes f7. This crazy move is very playable, because if we just go king takes f7, white goes queen to h5 check, and here we have like a few options. So white now has two hits on d5, so if we go just back king to g8, or even just pawn to g6, they can take this pawn, and uh, at the end collect our knight, after which there are uh, just two pawns, once they get the piece back. And we can play here king to e6, which launches some like really crazy lines, where white can just play rook e1 and ac3, and even let a second piece go, and it seems like white is kind of having all the fun here, even if this is like objectively like somewhere between minus 0.5 and minus 1. Uh, Black's best play is king to f8, getting onto a dark square out of these checks. Bishop takes d5, hits the knight, and threatens mate. We should go back knight d6 to deal with both those problems. But here, you know, white can just keep playing chess, honestly, and black's the one that has to defend uh, with the extra piece. So this is playable, it's an option, but I'm going to give you a different option because it's, you guys know me, this is not how I like to play. And so after knight takes f7, I'm going to recommend an insane move here. And the insane move is going to be knight takes f2. And it's like, what the heck is going on? This move's been only played two times ever. So what the heck is going on? So if they take our queen, we take their queen and it's check. And so they go king over. And at this point, I think we're, we just collect too many pieces. Like if we all take stuff, we're, we're a piece ahead at the end of this, right? So, so white, white can't play like that. Okay, we, 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 there's two games here, one of which was rook takes f2. But you'll note after just takes, and I think here just castles, or queen to f6, check. Okay, yeah, just castles. Here, black's gonna be like pretty much just a rook ahead with, with, with all the stuff hanging. So white cannot do that either. So we're talking about a queen move now. If white just goes queen to e2, check. Then we can now go king takes f7, and we've thrown in knight takes f2, which is a pretty good throw in. And so that's not the best option for white. And white one time here played queen to f3. Queen to f3 was not a very good move either, because the issue now is queen to h4. And with queen to h4, we, we, we have, this is an insane position again, but we have all sorts of threats, because our point is, so like let's say they take our rook, we go knight to g4, it's check, and we want to go queen takes h2. And so here, white needs to find some very precise defenses, because again, you know, they can trade everything, but they're going to be losing at the end of all these trades. They could play your d4, we play bishop takes d4, and again, we just want to pull back knight g4. So if they play like even bishop e3 to block this, still knight g4, we're threatening queen takes h2. So white needs to be very, very, very precise in defending this. So there is one move that is good for white, and then this launches some just, just just absolutely insane lines. I can't imagine you'll get this in a game, but it would be really cool if you do, so leave it in the comments if you do. But it's with queen to h5 here, so it's just so unclear who's attacking who or what the heck is going on in this position. Um, but here, I'm going to recommend bishop to g4. So we're developing a piece, our knight defends that bishop, and we're hitting that queen, so we can't just go knight e5 and queen to f7, if we're gonna make any sense of this position at all, with everything just hanging. So th this is best play from both sides. White needs to know to play knight to d6 check. So it's double check, so we can't take either of these pieces. We go king to d7, and now we're trying to again take stuff. White should go queen takes d5. That was part of the point of going knight to d6 check, is that they can next go queen takes d5. Uh, knight takes d8 here is playable, but I, I think not, not very good, because white's gonna come out 
down some material with with just lots of stuff hanging and, and this problem as well <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll show you the whole line here bishop to g4 then knight to d6 check king d7 queen takes d5 and now here we're simply going to take the knight and they're going to take this as well actually at the end so we go knight to d3 check it's a good throw in uh we defend the bishop from this so king to h1 must be played now we take it we take here and we play rook to f8 so to stop some invasions here it's a little unclear so we're down a pawn but white's development is very bad. You could say our development is pretty bad, but I think ours is going to get fixed like a little bit more easily with, with stuff coming into the game a little bit more naturally. So white is up a pawn here, but this required kind of some insane play on both sides. So, and I, I mean, I can't imagine you find this in a game. Even knight takes f7 alone is, is a pr pretty difficult move to find. But after knight takes f2, if you know what you're doing here and your opponent doesn't, I mean, I mean, come on. This is a position where you have to know what you're doing. So knight takes f7 is the best move here for white but i think it is very very difficult to play and so that's why i think so knight takes e5 is probably the most challenging line but only if your opponent finds the right stuff otherwise we play d5 this bishop retreats and we're just going to play knight takes f2 and so here uh we're going to talk about a couple other options that white has one of which i mean if we if we keep going down this line we covered d3 and knight takes e5 both of which you know or okay after knight takes e5 we throw in d5 but both of which we want to play knight takes f2 rookie one is actually the third most common move which is crazy because it just loses on the spot we can just play bishop takes f2 and just snag that rook that that, that might have caused us problems otherwise next move is d5 and white can pretty much resign so rook to e1 that's just a nice little added bonus that that's a terrible move on the table here for white I'm going to cover two moves now that I think are actually pretty good moves. So one of which is d4. d4 is very interesting because, okay, we have played a little bit on principally, right? Like we just grabbed this knight takes e4 stuff with our king still in the center. Like white should be trying to blow up in the center and punish us. So if, I mean, if we just play like the most obvious stuff here with pawn takes d4, I can play rook e1, hitting this knight on the pin now. Our knight can't move away because we're not castled. So we should play your d5, but white can now... Play a move like bishop takes d5 and knight to c3 so we, we can't take it like this because our queen's hanging of course we can't use the knight because of the issue on our king and white next move is going to collect on e4 and keep causing problems for us so this is no fun what we need to know to play here is the move pawn to d5 pawn to d5 very very helpful move in in uh all these situations where we're playing knight takes e4 because d5 not only does it develop for us it attacks the bishop it secures our knight does all sorts of good things so here, white, if they want to uh, get back in the game for equality, they should play a move like pawn takes c5, pawn takes c4. And here, remember, we're up two pawns at this exact instant, and white should be getting both of them back, probably, uh, no matter what they do. We're up one pawn at this exact instant, but this one's also falling. So a move like queen to e2, uh, we have all sorts of targets here. We just play knight takes c5, white takes one of these, we play knight e6, we castle our king, and this position is just completely equal. Queen takes d8, white can also play. It's also really not a big deal. Knight takes e5, hits some stuff. We deal with that stuff. We play knight takes c5 next turn, hopefully. And war, this end game is also likewise equal. And I think d4 is a pretty hard move to find. So I think, you know, by playing knight takes e4, you, 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 you put a lot of, you put a lot of good, good, exciting lines on the table. That white is actually pretty likely to get into. So I don't think d4 is a big issue. Knight to c3, someone recommended this actually in the comments of another video. Knight to c3. I mean, every other move here, we can pretty much just play d5. And bishop takes f7, I mean, it's just completely ridiculous. Knight takes e5, I mean, this king can go back uh, just about anywhere and block simply a piece ahead. So, I mean, we're going all the way down here, the most common moves, but I'll cover them all. Knight to c3. So it's interesting because if we just snag that knight, I mean, knight to c3 does stop d5. If we just snag this knight, d takes c3, it's a very good capture. And white's like up, it's like a reverse Stafford, but white's like a move ahead. I mean, they've made, played this move Castles, which doesn't op happen too often in the Stafford. But d takes c3, it's, it opens up like all sorts of white's pieces to, to make, you know, these threats. And this is no fun. We're playing right now a reverse Stafford. I like, like, how did we get here? So knight to c3, in order to maintain equality, we should come back knight to f6 to not give white this very pleasant d takes c3 capture. Now, if white's super smart, they can play like a move like d4 here, just like a two pawn sacrifice, after which, you um, um, the, the position's pretty intriguing here after d4, but white here will most likely be playing just knight takes e5. And this is another trick, because it looks like we can actually just play d5 to deal with these problems, actually on f7. However, however, and it's never been found in the four games. However, I think the order would be knight takes d5 first, I believe. Yeah, knight takes d5 first, and then knight takes f7. Double knight sacrifice out of nowhere, out of absolutely nowhere, but then check. 
takes here there's queen f7 on the table like like all of a sudden and rookie one coming so all of a sudden this position positions a complete disaster for for black after this crazy double knight sacrifice so d5 we actually shouldn't play we actually shouldn't play we should just play castles next turn we'll play d5 so they can play like d4 play bishop e7 and again this position is completely equal so that's if castles that covers all of castles so, so if c3 or castles we're going to be going for knight takes e4 and you know if you don't remember everything that's fine but you should remember you know we're, we want to play d5 as soon as we play knight takes e4 and if in doubt just trade everything on f2 just trade everything on f2 and remember that like queen h4 check pattern to pick up that knight over here okay so there's another line here that really gives no concrete uh fun stuff going on in the position and the move is just pawn to d3 so pawn to d3 is like the one move that really just defends e4 and it's like okay what are we doing here what are we doing here and so okay so i mean i i faced this a few times and so like we, we can get just like a four knights or, or or even like your opponent's like playing like some joko pinissimo right with like pawn c3 okay it's not it's, it's not very intimidating you should just know this trick of like here if you just do nothing then your opponent can like trap your bishop like this so, so just play like a6 in this position so that your bishop has a square okay but just uh nice c3 d6 okay now we get to this position right and here's what i would advise if you guys want to have fun in this position, as I have many times and checkmate my opponent, is castle long. The trick is to castle long and to launch an attack. And so what we want to do here is we want to get our bishop to g4, put a lot of pressure on this pin, and you know we're going to play an d 4 So if, for example, if our opponent just castles here, which is not the most common move, but if our opponent just castles here, we do, we're going to play bishop to g4 using this pin and h3, bishop h5, they're not going to want to play g4 anymore. They're not going to want to play g4 because their king is castle and it's going to be very weakening for their king. So if they just like do nothing, we play here nick d4. We're putting a lot of pressure here. We're going to force them to go g takes f3. We're going to have our queen here making threats and we're going to castle long and we're going to be trying to open up files over here. Castling long means that we want to attack, right? Because castling long give, gives us the opportunity to push pawns on the king side, which we would never do if our king was over there. But to push pawns on the king side, trade off those pawns and open these files for our rooks to attack with. And so what we want to do is to play bishop to g4. Now, now our, you might say, okay, white can do like the same thing. We have a symmetrical position. White can play bishop to g5 in this position. However, this is a mistake because we're going to play h6. Bishop to g5, you can actually see, is the most common move. But we're going to play bishop to g5, h6. And now if we follow that, we can play g5 here. And the point is we haven't committed yet. We haven't committed to castling yet. So we just come out bishop to g4 and our king's going to go the other way. Because we play g5 and this is actually helpful for us so if white castles into this i mean that's just a disaster first of all we can play knight d4 but secondly you know you give me a couple moves here even aside from g takes f3 even let's say okay i mean i, I stole a couple moves let's say white's knight was supporting it or something okay i play here h5 now i'm trying to play h4 to trap this bishop and now after h3 you know even even let's say i traded this stuff what we, what we can do is we can play g4 so we can call them to play h3 and h3 is a hook it's a hook for us to come in and trade off those pawns. The point of pushing pawns on off size castling is to trade pawns. The point of trading pawns is to open files. So here with that pawn trade, we opened a file. And what we're going to do now is we're going to swing this rook over here and we're going to come in for a checkmate, right? So there, that's all sorts of fun things we can do. They had to play h3 because or else we were going to play h4, which is going to trap that bishop right there. So this is how we want to attack. This is the blueprint for attacking. We're going to get our bishop to g4 and we're going to push these pawns up and try to open things up for our rooks right so okay so white can actually just play h3 right h3 looks like it stops our bishop to g4 idea however here's what i suggest so we covered bishop g5 the most common move h3 the second most common move i'm going to suggest you play h6 now if they castle play g5 g5 we're going to just force your bishop into g4 just force it in there right so okay let's say bishop e3 most common move just g4 you get that trade and it's even better than with these pawns on the board it's even better because we're going to go queen d7, we're going to go rook g8, castles, use this g file, and have an awesome, awesome attack with, with, with that g file. And I'll show you some excellent examples of that very, very soon. So the idea here is to just get that bishop into g4, castle the other way, and push these pawns. So let, let's actually have a look at a couple of my games here where I've had to face, you know, push gas gambit deniers that really just give me nothing. Uh, well, this was actually... Okay, well, we transposed into that anyway. This was actually a, a, a game from when it was three months ago, so I guess I didn't know about the Knight takes e4 discovery that I would make, that future me would make later. So anyway, we, we, we got this. I, I, I forgot about the move order of this game. But anyway, my opponent here uh, is just castling and also plays this move, bishop to g5. 
and with bishop to g5 i'm playing h6 and there's two good things that can happen to me here number one good thing is that they play bishop h4 and i just get in g5 with tempo and my pawns have targets to keep mowing down to attack with number two good thing that can happen to me is what happened in the game which is takes g takes and with g takes i get this glorious glorious g file right here right so we can continue i, I am just castling my opponent's trying to launch something on, on the queen tide but i'm just playing rook to g8 and now here so my opponent plays b4 and I like already just don't care about this. Already there, there's there's so many um, ways to end the game. So one of them is bishop takes f3, takes. You guys can pause the video and think about what you might play here. So there's so many good moves here. One of them is rook takes g2. So if king takes, we can go check, check, and rook over here, right? So so many great things we can do with that open g file. Uh, another thing is queen to h3, because e so, so first of all, we're using that pin, threatening checkmate on g2 if they play g3. We can just take it because we have another great pin there. So if they take here, take, you know, and then we, then we eat the knight, we bring the rook over, all sorts of fun checkmates coming here. So really great things. I did something different in the game. I played bishop to h3. I got two question marks for it. My opponent played an 81, which is a pretty logical way to defend this pawn. I guess my opponent had the option to just play g3 and give the rook, so which is why uh, my move wasn't as good as it could have been. But we just go rook takes sacrificed so my opponent takes it queen g4 and that's checkmate next turn i didn't even need this ruck even though like it maybe would have been helpful in several lines but okay just an absolutely crushing attack that we can get if our opponent you know comes out with this bishop too early as most people do so here's another game actually that is against so you might say okay that was actually against like a 17 underrated player this is against a 2561 it's against a 2561 who clearly knows what they're doing right and here so we start out symmetrically we start out symmetrically, and so, like, the point is, like, they play a3, okay, I play a6, you know, I'm giving them the opportunity, I really want them to castle, because if I play bishop to g4 just a little bit too soon, then they can play h3 and g4, and then they can castle the other way. So I'm only playing bishop to g4 once I know that they're castle in, in this direction, right? So th that's actually almost the advantage of being black in this position. Of course, objectively, it's better to be white. You, you know, just to, just just to have that extra move. But the advantage of being black in this position is that is that I, I can kind of read based on what they're going to do here, right? I mean, I think the best way for white to play is probably just like this, play a, a calm queenside castles after which the position is just equal. But not a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are either coming out bishop g5 and giving us the opportunity to play h6 g5 and then castle long, or they're just going to castle short. And so we can see what happened in this game. My opponent's just castling short, and I go out bishop to g4, and now I come in knight d4. I come in knight d4, and now I want to make them go g takes f3. I'm actually in no rush to do it because they play knight to d5, and so they're doing the same thing, but I'm like, good, do it. I encourage that knight to move. Good, do that, because I'm not castled here. You're castled here, I'm not. My king's going to go the other way, and what's going to go here is not a king, but a rook to get you on that file. So bishop h4, rook g8, and now here, like, already um, white is losing, but they play bishop to g3, so bishop to g3 keeps them alive for the moment because it allows them to play g takes f3. If they didn't have g takes f3, that would be a much, much bigger problem. I'm just playing queen to d7, just stepping up my queen, getting ready to castle, keep my own king safe. So c3, they're encouraging me to play knight takes f3, and bishop takes h3. However, now that bishop cannot stay there forever, and I just play h5. h5, h4, and it's just going to win a piece. It's really just going to win a piece. Uh, and, you know, there wasn't really much my opponent could do about it after they played bishop to g5, which gave, and, and you know, allowed me to go g takes f6, and gave me this really crushing attack on the king's king side. So they play d4, the strike in the middle of the board, not really doing much because this pawn is actually fortifying there if they capture. You know, I have no interest really in trading queens. King h1, looks like it maybe solves the problem, but I can just play h4 because, you know, at this point my opponent probably should have let the bishop just fall, but they took this pawn. I play bishop to d2 check, and after this, bishop takes f3 is check, and I win the queen next turn. It was actually a, a really, really insane game, but where I... <laughs> I'm up a queen, but I flagged my opponent here with uh, 0.2 seconds on my clock, my opponent flagged. So I barely even won that game um, to allow me to show it here. But super, super fun stuff. Okay, we have an awesome, awesome new repertoire for crushing bush gas gambit deniers. No matter what they do, no matter what they do, if they start the game with uh, e4, e5, ooh, ooh, this is actually the study I made that I will link in the description below. But no matter what they do, if they start the game like this, we're going to have something fun to do. Either they're going to play like c3 here, after which we get to play d5, and and you know that there's there there's all, all sorts of fun, very very quick development that we can take advantage of, or they try to transpose into a scotch, which doesn't work, 
and we can um again really take advantage of that really quickly by playing knight to f6 get that rook over there or they play bishop to c4 and we're going to play here knight to f6 and just really just try to play knight takes e4 next move whether or not they let us but um okay obviously the most common stuff is when they play knight takes e5 so you have to check out the original video on bush gas gambit theory thank you guys so so much for watching gambiting out